and let's pray. Lord, as we enter this time of communion, time to celebrate the Lord's Supper, please draw us near. Help us to have attentive hearts that just want to praise and worship you during this time. And Jesus, it's always in your great name we pray. Amen. Good morning. My name is Eric Martin. I am one of the pastors here at Grace Bible Church, and we're about to spend time celebrating communion or the Lord's Supper. And during this time, we're going to take a little cracker and a little cup of juice, and that cracker represents the Lord's body that was given, and that cup of juice represents the Lord's blood that was shed at the cross. And as we do this, we want to, uh, we're going to be spending most of our time in God's word, and we want you to have a copy of God's word in your hands. So some men are going to be walking around handing out Bibles, so if you don't have one, please raise your hands, and they'll, they'll make sure you get one. Everyone else, please turn to the book of Jude, right at the end of your Bibles, right before Revelation. So if you find Revelation, go back a little bit, and we're going to be in the book of Jude. Have you ever done something wrong and had to stand before a person of authority? Parents, teacher, principal, boss, judge, and receive accusations. How did you feel? How one feels in that situation is probably proportional to the potential punishment or consequence of the outcome. If it's something trivial, probably not a lot of anxiety. However, if it's something serious, then there could be potential for great anxiety. What if your life was on the line? What if your eternal destination was on the line? What if the one you were standing before was omniscient. He knows for a fact everything you've ever done, every sin you've ever committed, and he's not asking for you to defend yourself because he knows the truth. How would that make you feel? We're going to be in verses 24 and 25 in the book of Jude. Jude 24 and 25. Please follow along. As I read, now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy to the only God, our savior, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Jude wrote this letter to believers. He wrote to them so that they would be able to fight against those who had snuck in to their gatherings for spreading false doctrine. And here at the end of the letter, he provides some amazing, wonderful, encour worshipful encouragement. One of the things this passage provides is an eschatological picture, an end times picture of believers standing before God, standing before God the Father in his glory. It says that he's able to make you stand in the presence of his glory. This is a picture of individual, individual believers standing before the ultimate authority. In the Bible, when people were standing or when people were in God's presence, they were terrified. They were frightened. The prophet Isaiah pronounced a curse on himself. The prophet Ezekiel just fell down on his face. The apostles Peter, James, and John, where they were exhorted by God the Father, fell face down, and the Bible says they were terrified. And here we find the astounding truth that these believers will stand before God blameless and with great joy. Sinners, standing before God, blameless and with great joy. They're not guilty and terrified. How can this be? 
How can sinners standing before a holy and perfect judge be blameless? It's the gospel. God the Father sent his son to this earth for the purpose of living a perfect and holy life, holy life to be mocked, beaten, scourged, and ultimately pierced and hung on a cross. Jesus, as he was experiencing that incredible physical anguish of crucifixion, he was bearing the wrath of the Father. He was taking the penalty for sin, but that sin was not his own. He became the substitute for sinners. And for all those that trust and believe in him, he bore their sin. For those sinners, their sins are forgiven. Those sinners will be judged based on what Jesus did, not what they did. Those sinners are now blameless when they stand before God, and they will have great joy. There's another eschatological picture that I want to contrast with this one, and it's found in Revelation chapter 20. Verse 11. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who sat upon it, from whose presence earth and heaven fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, the great and the small, standing before the throne. And books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged from the things which were written in the books, according to their deeds." The sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and Hades gave up the dead which were in them, and they were judged, every one of them, according to their deeds. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Here, God is on his throne. And sinners are standing before him and their eternal destination hangs in the balance and these sinners will be judged according to their own deeds none of them are blameless and all of them will be thrown into the lake of fire that is a terrifying picture if you're here today but you don't trust and believe in Jesus, you would admit that you haven't repented and turned from your sin and turned to follow Christ, then this is not a time for you, and we'd simply ask that as the trays come, that you would just simply pass those by. And I am glad that you're here, and I'm glad that you get to hear about these future realities. The question is, which one of these two future realities will be yours? I beg you, talk to me, talk to one of the other pastors or the person that brought you. Do not leave without considering your future. Believers, Jude 24 and 25 is all about worship and praise to God. I'm going to read it again, and as I read it, simply listen to the words and worship and praise God our Savior for the future reality that lies before you that lies before you because of what Jesus has done at the cross to make you blameless. And after I'm done, as your hearts are prepared, please take communion on your own. Now, to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to make you stand in the presence of his glory, blameless with great joy, to the only God our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. Men, please serve us.